Okay guys, so today we are going to go over blood typing and a few other things, but I want to explain to you guys why blood typing is so much different than all of our other forms of inheritance. So to start off with blood typing, we actually have three different alleles. So when we talked about like before, um, you know, we have a dominant and a recessive allele and that's it. Yeah, for those examples, that was it. But now we're going to bring in another allele and mix it in. So actually we have three different alleles. However, things uh, still stand true where for a genotype, we are only going to have two alleles that make it up. So in other words, guys, um, think of like a bag of marbles you have, okay? And you're going to pull out two marbles and there's three different uh, colors of marbles in this bag. Let's say there's green, uh, let's say there's blue and there's red, green, blue and red, okay? If you're pulling two out, you might get two blue ones, you might get two green ones, you might get two red ones, or you might get a blue one and a green one, but you will never get all three just because you're only picking out two of them, all right? So here we go. For our blood typing, we are either going to have uh, A, B, or an O allele. Now in your book, and, and most of the time on the AP test guys, what they do is they use um, I in front of the A and the B and then just nothing in front of the O. So A and B, A and B, are co-dominant to one another. A and B are co-dominant to one another. A and B are completely dominant over O. So blood typing combines codominance and complete dominance, all right? So in other words, if you are AA, you're just A blood, okay? If you are AB, they are codominant. So we see both of those uh, phenotypes in there, okay? So A and B are codominant. If you are AO, we don't worry about that O. That O is meaningless to us. You are not codominant with AO. You are just type A blood, okay? So... With um, A and B blood, guys, what's going on with our red blood cells, with our erythrocytes, is they are going to have different uh, carbohydrates on the outside of those erythrocytes, outside of those red blood cells. Now, A has a certain carbohydrate. If you can see there, it's represented by triangles. B, we have circles uh, for that carbohydrate. A, B blood, which is this third box here, it has both of those carbohydrates because they're co-dominant to one another. We're going to see both of those uh, phenotypes. Now, O blood, which is technically recessive to the other two, has no carbohydrates on its outside. All right. So let's do some examples here. But first, before we do examples, let me go over everything with blood typing for us here. So let's do phenotype. Let's do genotype, who they can donate to, and who they can receive from. All right, so phenotypes, you can be AB, you can be A blood, you can be B blood, or you can be O blood here. So, let me make some boxes here going across. Try my best to do straight lines. It's working so well. Yeah, good enough. All right. All right, cool. I know, not the best, but that's all right. So. For genotypes, if you are AB blood, again, remember, for the genotypes, guys, we always need two alleles. If you are AB, your only genotype you can be is AB. If you are type A blood, you can have two A alleles, or you can have an A and a recessive O. Now, I know, guys, in your book, they use the I's, so this one will be IA, IB. This one will be I, A, I, A. How they write the O 
Still the IA is the same. The O is actually a lowercase i. All right, that's how they represent it. There's no superscript there. B, you could be BB or the stinky BO, body odor. No, just teasing. So it could be IB, IB, IB lowercase i. And then O, you just have two recessive alleles, or your book would represent it I, I. Okay? So, if you have AB blood, you can donate to AB only. And that's it. Okay? You can receive from AB, you can receive from A, you can receive from B, or you can receive from O. In other words, as long as they have one of those carbohydrates on the outside, you can receive from them, okay? So let's go down to A here. A, there is no um, B carbohydrates on it, on A. So it changes some, 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 ugh, some things up. They can receive from A or O. They can donate to AB. They can donate to A, and that's it. Okay. B can donate to once again AB or B, and they can receive from B or O. They cannot receive from same with A, but A and B they cannot receive from AB because the opposite um, carbohydrate. So for A, that B carbohydrate on AB would actually repel it, all right? And then lastly, O, O is really nice blood type because it can donate to AB, A, B, and O. It can donate to all blood types, all right? Same thing up here with AB, it can receive from all blood types. O can only receive from O. So yeah, if you're O, it's kind of hard to get blood, right? So there's a good chart for you guys on everything with blood typing. I'm gonna go over some examples with you and then we'll uh, be done with blood typing. All right, we'll start off nice and easy, guys. Here's our Punnett square down here. All right, so let's do what percent? Um, let's do does instead of will. Uh, let's do dad is, let's say heterozygous for B. All right, very easy example here, guys. If they're both heterozygous, um, we'll do mom up top. She would be A, O, dad would be B, O. So this would be a 25% chance of having O blood right there, okay? Very easy example. I give you the genotypes and yeah, that makes everything nice and easy. Let's try something a little bit harder and a little more interesting. Um, mom has, let's say O blood. Right. The baby has, we'll say B blood. Dad is 
heterozygous for A. What is going on? Very simple. What is going on? So, mom is O blood. Dad, heterozygous for A. So dad's going to be A, O. Oops. There we go. All right. In this one, the mom, because the baby could be two genotypes. The baby could be BB or BO. All right. So it's possible that the baby got the O from the mom. So there's no problem there. Okay. Could have gotten that O, couldn't have gotten that O. But the dad has no Bs to give. So the best thing I could think of for this one would be um, kind of like, you know, going Jerry Springer and Maury Povich. Uh, he is not the father, you know. So the dad would need a B here or a B here in order for that baby to be his. Okay. Do another crazy example here. Let's say dad. Hmm. Um, we'll do dad having AB blood. Mom has O blood. Okay. Baby is born. And I'm just saying what's going on, guys. We'd have better questions at the end, you know. But helps us think through everything a little bit here. Okay. So, mom, O blood. And I'm going to put mom up here. Dad, and I'm labeling these for a reason. Okay. So, looking here, guys, this is a 0% chance for an AB baby. But the doctor said the baby is AB. Okay? Now, you can't say the dad isn't the father in this example because the mom gave the baby one of these O's. So, we know that baby has to have one of the O's. All right, that baby has to have an O. So that means that baby can be A, meaning AO, B for BO, or OO. The dad, there's no, there's no problem with the dad here. It's not like the dad isn't the father. What could have happened here, guys, is maybe they took blood from the wrong baby. Maybe they wrote the blood type down wrong, okay? The baby could definitely not have a B. The mom, I think she knows that she gave birth to that baby, right? So there wouldn't be any like weird, you know, cheating things going on here. Um, if the mom is OO, that baby has to have one of the O's. And if they give her a baby that is confirmed that has AB blood, that is definitely not her baby, all right? Or um, they might have taken the blood and wrote it down wrong on the paper. But that's blood typing in a nutshell, guys. Again. On the AP test, sometimes I like to do the eyes. Make sure you know um, if you see the eyes, that is going to be for blood typing. All right. So that's it there. Um, okay. So different types of um, phenotypic effects we're going to go over. The first one is pleiotropy. Uh, two main examples of this is cystic fibrosis and sickle cell anemia. So cystic fibrosis, just to start off there, guys, it affects the lungs, the pancreas, the digestive system, 
um, a bunch of different things. Why this is, is cystic fibrosis affects the mucus glands in someone's body. These people get very, very thick mucus, and that mucus can clog their lungs, which, yeah, that's not good. Um, with that mucus being so thick, it can actually block the enzymes that are being produced by the pancreas, and those enzymes may not get to the intestines, so that way those enzymes can't be used to aid in digestion, which means the person's going to have to um, use a lot more energy for digestion, digestion if they don't have enzymes working. What they'll do for these people is they will actually give them different breathing treatments to try to loosen and thin that mucus up. Um, but with these different uh, effects, guys, pleiotropy is going to have a lot of symptoms, okay? So sickle cell anemia, same thing. These people have erythrocytes, red blood cells that are not uh, circular or sphere-shaped. Instead, they are going to be a sickle shape, which if you want to draw what a sickle looks like, I'll make red for the red blood cell. It's going to look like that instead of looking like that. Problem is, this one has less surface area, so it cannot carry as much oxygen, so we have decreased O2 moving throughout the body. That'll affect everything, because oxygen goes to every single part of your body, your muscles, um, your brain. So less oxygen, you're going to have less um, ATP being generated, and that's not good, okay? So uh, sickle cell anemia will affect like every single part of your body because we have less ATP production, all right? I've had students in the past that have had sickle cell anemia, and they might be there one week perfectly fine. Next week, they're going to be down because, you know, they... Uh, their sickle cell might be acting up. All right. Okay. Um, next one, next type is called epistasis. Uh, this is where the gene at one area is going to affect the expression of a gene at another area. A lot of students always ask me, hey, you know, come, you know, hair color. Uh, why do I have red hair color and none of my parents do, you know? And red hair color isn't even in my family. Well, we can't solve hair color as a single monohybrid cross, all right? I get like, yeah, we would have a black allele, we'd have a brown allele, a red allele, a tan, a blonde, dirty blonde, all maybe a white, I don't know. But all these different alleles for hair color. Um, good example for this is in Labrador Retrievers, the dogs. They have different uh, genes for their hair color. And one gene, one chromosome, uh, if it's present, it can affect the expression of those genes, that hair color gene, on a different area, okay? So in other words, we don't have that, um, that expression just in one locus. It's in uh, more than one, all right? And this is too with people with red hair. Um, that's actually how that occurs. All right. Uh, I think we're good here, guys. We could skip this one. Okay. So last section here, guys. We're getting there. I know this was a very uh, long chapter. So we're going to go over some pedigrees. And pedigree is pretty much your family tree. I'm going to start them today, and then we will finish them tomorrow, go over some examples of them, but I'm just going to show you guys how to set one up today. Um, so a pedigree is your family tree of traits. And how we're going to use these guys is we're going to be able to determine some genotypes and the form of inheritance just by looking at them. All right. So anytime you guys see a pedigree, for this one, square, Square is a male. Circle, this is a female. If they are filled in, you guys can see this bluish purple color here. If they are filled in, that means they are affected by whatever condition we are talking about, all right? Um, if they are not filled in, that means they are not affected. Now, here's the thing. Some traits can be 
inherited dominantly, other traits can be inherited recessively. So when you are inheriting these traits, we have to determine if they are dominant or if they are recessive. Um, and then there's also different forms which we're going to talk about next time sex linked inheritance and then we're going to get into the pedigrees because there's going to be some pedigrees that are sex linked all right so with the pedigrees guys anytime we see a line in between two people just like this one here what that means is they um maybe had a marriage they are uh having a baby so these ones here they had one two three Four kids this kid over here that is not their kid that means this person had a baby with them and they had two kids all right what you never want to do with a pedigree is you can see they had one two three four kids you never want to do this all right that means a brother and a sister then had babies okay we don't want to draw it like that all right but that's pedigrees in a nutshell, guys. And like I said, we'll go over sex linked next time and I will finish up the chapter. All right, guys, have a good rest of your day.